yourself makes all the difference. The best way to predict future is to create it. Take a move. One good move. Create makes a future. All the difference. Join Shobit University. The best way to predict future. As a young citizen of India, is to create it. Knowledge Take and love for my nation. Create with the vision of transforming India into a developed nation. Way to I'm joining Shobit University. Citizen of India. What about you? Is to create it. Knowledge Take Namaskar, a very good morning to you all, respected speaker of the session, Dr. Sudhir Narayan Singh, and all the participants. I welcome you again in this lecture series on Sustainable Development Goals. Today, goal number 10 has been taken. In this world, we are all interconnected. Problems and challenges like poverty, climate change, migration, or economic crisis are never just confined to one country or region. Even the uh, even the countries, you know, skills have uh, communities living in abject uh, poverty. Even in developing countries or developed countries, this type of problem we can find. Uh, the oldest democracies uh, still wrestle with racism, homophobia, transphobia, and religious intolerance. Global inequality affects us all. Reducing inequality requires transformative change. Gender efforts, sorry, greater efforts are needed, especially in developing countries like India, to eradicate extreme poverty, hunger, and invest more in health, education, and social protection, and decent jobs, especially for young people, migrants, and refugees, and other vulnerable communities, etc. So these type of efforts should be taken in all the countries. And we have with us our respected sir. Before I invite him, to express his scholarly wisdom, I would like to introduce him. Dr. Sudhi Narayan Singh is a Banaras Hindu University alumnus. He is a bilingual poet, editor, critic, and short story writer. Dr. Singh rendered his services at various reputed Indian universities, colleges, and institutes as English faculty and ELT trainer. Presently, he is serving as head Department of Humanities and Social Sciences Madan Mohan Malviya, University of Technology, Gorakhpur, UP, India. Dr. Singh also referred his services to visually challenged students. His prestigious international certifications include TESOL's ELT Leadership Management Certificate, the ELT Leadership Management Certific Certificate yeah. Program conducted by TESOL, International Association, Alexandria, Virginia, USA, January 19 to 21 in 2017. An English language teacher's summer uh, seminar in 2018 by Department of Continuing Education and Education and Exeter College, University of Oxford, Oxford, UK, during July 22 to August 4, in 2018, and many more. Dr. Singh acted as a resource person at HRDC, DDU, GU Gorakhpur, HRD, CBPSWU, Sonipat. UG, UGC, ASC, GJUS, and T, Haryana, and attended over 50 national and international seminars and conferences. And see our technical sessions in them, including I am Bangalore, Bitsvilani, SRM University, and other institutions of repute. His poems appeared in journals like Poets International, Rock Pebbles, and anthologized in The Enchanted Vault, Poets Paradise, The Fancy Realm, and The Melodies of immortality. He contributed 80 research articles which are widely published in, by Indian and foreign publishers and also edited three books, Post Feminism in India, Myth or Reality, Advanced Information Communication Technology in India Reading, and Q Jaruri Ho Jata Hai Unmulan. He co-authored two books, Formal Letters and Feminine Consciousness, Glimpses, Indian Perspectives. Moreover, he enabled first visually challenged student of the country to get admission to Faculty of Arts and uh, Faculty of Social Sciences, BHU, Varanasi, India. Dr. Singh awarded Shiksha Ratan Award by India International Friendship Society, New Delhi, and Global Professional Membership of TESOL, Alexandria, Virginia, by RELO, US Embassy, New Delhi, and recently on August 15, in 2022, he received Letter of Appreciation from Her Excellency Madam Anandi Ben Patel, 
Honorable Governor Ruth Pradesh and Professor J.P. Pandey, Honorable Vice Chancellor Badar Mohan Walviya, University of Technology, Gorakhpur. Sudhir Narayan Singh is a life member of Association of English Studies of India and Ismania University Center for International Program, formerly American Study Research Center, ASRC, Ismania University, Hyderabad. Dr. Singh is the founder president and National Digital Library of India Club, Madan Mohan Balwe University of Technology, Gorakhpur, and founder president the Finance Club, MMM UT Gorakhpur, and he is vice chairman council of Students Activity CSA and Vice President CDC uh, Triple M UT Gorakhpur. So this is just an outline of his profile. And with these words, I would like to invite him. Uh, sir, please, I welcome you. Uh, please share your uh, ex uh, visions, share your views on this uh, goal number 10. Uh, so I welcome you, sir. sir. Please, sir. Thanks so much, the delegates, faculty members and uh, students joining from uh, the Department of Management Science, Management Studies Department, Madan Mohan Malviya University of Technology. And at the same time, delegation from Soviet University. And at the outset, I may please take this opportunity to Honorable Vice Chancellor, Soviet University, for vision, revisioning and enabling us to revisit UN Sustainable Goals. At the outset, when we are standing at the beginning of the third decade of, uh, you know, this 21st century, everything is, you know, associated and collaborated. Nothing could see in isolation. And at the same time, the topic reduced inequalities. It's a goal. But how long we are able to achieve it? Not only that, the prerequisite is to know that there exist inequality. Because when we talk any time, in particularly in India or in Southeast Asia, when either when we start a debate or discussion or discourse on the topic of such problems and issues, primary nature of mankind is to go in denial mode. They won't believe that such problem, there are people who will not agree that such problem even do exist in our society or in civilization. But inequalities are as real and as visible in society that we need to ponder over like anything. And its eradication of inequality is equally significant as it has been the eradication of coronavirus. It is like a virus and contaminating our society. First of all, let us have a focus that how long and how many types of inequalities exist in our society. So far as Southeast Asia is concerned, when we will start realizing that most of the countries we have been colonized by Britishers, and as their colony, we have been suppressed by them. Even before invaders and intruders came and they exploited us. And the many culture came together and we become a heterogeneous kind of society. That heterogeneity is really sometime, you know, it, it became seamless, but at many places, it surfaced on the society in multiple sort of inequality. To be more referential, I would like to begin with, because United Nations 
vision is a broader one and we need to look it into the broader canvas. I wish to quote here Indira Gandhi, human environment. And where you will see that in, in her address at Stockholm, Sweden, Indira Gandhi said that, uh, I quote Indira Gandhi, uh, her Stockholm address, that in my childhood, I am blessed with an opportunity to see sleep in the open sky and visiting a star strewn sky and witnessing that I have been mesmerized by the beauty of that. I unquote. Again, I, I quote in the Gandhi there, later on, she said, My primary concern and keen interest is to talk about this earth as. The earth is itself is the only fit home for mankind. And later on, she started developing a discussion on the existential issue of mankind on this planet that is earth. And while talking about the earth, see, earth is the fit home for human existence, not only human existence, all flora, fauna and life under the sea, on this earth and in the sky. But how selfish the mankind is as a whole, that it is we who are talking most of the time, saving the, saving the planet, but at the same time, we are exploiting it for our benefit. See, howsoever clever we may be, but we cannot cheat nature. And exploiting the nature for human benefit is become the day-to-day -day practice. This is the broader canvas from where I would like to draw the picture of mankind who himself is declaring as self-proclaimed God as the man is the incarnation of God and uh, as he is painted in the self-image of God. But um, as we, we start talking about mankind, we would like to say why it is not mankind or womankind or even the transgender. Somewhere we see that language itself is the masculine construct. Where the dominance of masculinity is self-imposed and projected on the, you know, other people, on the other species. And man declares himself as the self-proclaimed king or the owner of this all flora, fauna on this earth. There are three genders existing in mankind, masculine, feminine and trans. Many talks and discourse are there about the gender equality and that is, that is the desired goal also, reducing inequality among genders. So transgender and woman and man. The lang language as the masculine construct, we need to revisit the language and there itself it came as the concept of gender fair language and gender inclusive language. The concept of gender inclusivity became so pivotal and prominent that even its basic, like we should not use the term mankind, rather we should use the term humankind. And I even talking about humankind, when we will talk about gender discrimination, I, I will be referential, as referential as possible. Uh, I would like to quote Amartya Sen, the Nobel laureate of, you know, our very own country uh, in India. And Amartya Sen wrote an article, Seven Types of Gender Inequality on this Earth. He started talking about seven types of gender inequality and the impact of technology as a curse and as a boon 
at one end it is enhancing this inequality on the other end it is coming projecting it as the great equalizer great leveler when i talk about amar sen he said that earlier it was a dream to have a preference uh, on a, of a baby boy over any other gender but technology added the problem of this inequality and then he said prenatal inequality existed for moving further from prenatal to natal and then to opportunity inequality existing in the opportunity of equal education and a lot many things equal opportunity inequality in managerial world people start talking it like invisible glass ceiling and in the professional world and blah blah i won't move in that too much but here i would like to give you two citation one from you know rajasthan state of rajasthan and the other one citation from a news writing by urvashi butalia so first let us talk about urvashi butalia he is the publisher and great thinker great gender activist who said that again i quote the moment the doctor says it is a girl it's not the birth even before birth ultrasound result the moment the doctor says it is a girl a struggle begins for existence for survival and for letting the needs not cut her to the sizes and she concludes urvashi butalia concludes that there is no other country on this earth where fetuses female fetuses are killed in womb in such a large amount number as in india so this is the another picture of the uh, you know where i persuade the participant to accept that there exists the gender inequality and society is highly gendered i would like to share another example of a serial satya meva jayate where they the host conducted a sting operation in jaipur and a very celebrated doctor agreed to go for a warsan and the logic that he forwards is a kind of dirty economics being practiced in the society he said that i quote the doctor rules for the fools your need is son and my need is money and based on this logic he agreed to go for the abortion of a female baby existing in the womb not only that you might be aware i won't take the name a very popular dancer and singer star from rajasthan when she was born she was buried alive in the you know form of her father by her father some relative or somebody saw this egg and sinful egg and undug the pit and to bring that girl and that girl is making her name and fame everywhere when we start talking about from the gender lgbtq and other issues they are nowhere their rights are third gender is not getting a place anywhere and still the area earlier the work division i would quote tenition alfred lord tenition though he was representative poet of victorian age 
another time queen victoria was ruling aprox half of this earth but see the representative poet of victorian age writes that work division of male gender based work division she for the sword and she for the needle she for the hearth and he for the field this kind of gender discrimination even in the other side of the globe and european nations and that to one of the most popular nation on this earth that was ruling the half of this globe when you will move to such writing again my whole talk is in the deductive method deductive logic is there so i started from the you know earth this planet and then i am going towards penetrating and deductively moving towards the asian subcontinent and the southeast asia moving towards you know even not in in africa also there was an incident that ngo wanted to conduct some uh, you know survey some session for the girl child of bringing and to mainstream the reduce equality among women to reduce gender based inequality and there was a little girl of 5 6 years she was looking it from a big distance when they visited that ngo people in south africa they asked that why don't you come and look from the close area close vicinity she said no i can't come they said why she said because i am a girl they carried her to the tent where program was going on they said <laughs> please come inside why are you not coming girl again hesitated and she said no i can't come why do you do you can't come then then she said because i am a girl later on they carried her to the stay stage nearby stage and said why don't you come on the stage she said she was she started crying and she said no i can't then the question was that why can't you come up there she with full tears in her eyes she said because i am a girl so that kind of you know by birth we are either male or female or trans but the societal contact construct the gender society divides us into masculinity femininity and transgenderhood moving beyond this is the you know a kind of inequality existing there and great feminist economist amartya sen ponders over it and talks about this kind of problem existing inequality existing in india let us move again deductively that first inequality is gender inequality and then there is inequality of color caste and race a uh, 1960s when black movement was at its peak in america and other places the kind of racial discrimination was going on where the blacks were not given even the right to enter in a home where they are serving from the front door they were supposed to they go there from the back door and backyard 
and their existence was not considered. Not only that, this is the, you know, a kind of dominance of white people on black and that kind of racial inequality and racial superimposition of the power. I blame it, the kind of, you know, for white people, for all kind of, such kind of inequality. And they cannot call them a civilized people until and unless they are not training their coming generations to respect the people of colored people and people of other colors. Clear. Moving towards the other part of the, you know, globe, another kind of problem. You might be aware about endangered labor and girbitias. When people from Asian subcontinent transferred to the other countries, African countries or other countries, in the name of agreement, and they were known as girbitias, when once they visited to transport it to that land, there all the documents were confiscated and they were left over there as a slave and slave trade. How a man can declare his supremacy on the other man, disclosing and declaring as the slave. Moving beyond these indentured labor and all these things, you know, Literature and culture, though they carry and they try to preserve. Now coming again, this this is you know intercontinental inequality. I focused on, and then after gendered inequality, I this intercontinental practices, and all that. I would like to focus on India. The Dalits of India. You know, their condition earlier was in the middle India, not better than the blacks in the America and other in South Africa. And they had to face a lot many problems accordingly. And they had to face, uh, you know, great inequality in their life. Now the problem is that it is all the case of colonialism. But after the Second World War, not only that, during Second World War, Hitler was there and who declared German supremacy theory, Aryan supremacy theory. His guru, Nietzsche, he was the propounder of the theory of the concept of Superman. Nietzsche gave birth to the Superman theory. And then there came the first case of genocidal result. When he started thinking of eradicating the race from the planet, this was the organized attack on race. But as the Second World War winded up, the civilization and particularly Indian society when it gets free and after gaining that freedom, immediately India was split at the time of even its gaining freedom into two nations, Pakistan and India. Then, though these and Bangladesh later on, these three nations were having same, sharing same history, same culture, and the same thing. But after, you know, a few years, they started struggling with, among us, each other. They started fighting with each other. And uh, then they started facing different problems. A Hindu minority in Pakistan and Baluch minority in Pakistan, they are still heading and facing 
such kind of inequality on the in the neighborhood country indian neighborhood and not only that in even in bangladesh you will find that in bangladesh you can read i am quoting taslima nashreen's lajja there she writes that in the streets of bangladesh uh, a special community a particular religion was attacked by the dominant religion and slogans were shouted in the street like in hindi i am using hindi version of that bangla book lajja taslima nasreen ek do hindu dharo subah sham nashta kar kill means attack and kill one or two hindu and in morning and evening and then make a breakfast of that so that way ek do hindu dharo subah sham nashta Later on, our country was facing a lot many problems like sec section and sub sections. But first, organized attempt was to remove and reduce inequality. At least in Indian civilization, came when our constitution was implemented. and a great architect of indian constitution baba saheb bhimrao ambedkar ji whose death anniversary we were uh, you know we remembered him on 6th of december very recently he come up with the offer of giving empowerment to dalits you know dalit started gaining a power but the way they got they are gaining their empowerment equality inequality is reduced definitely no man can deny that inequality exist even after that even amongst dalits there became elite and equal and inequal so inequality is there so somewhere it is the time to revisit reinvestigate and reshare our opinion and restructure the society when you will study literature from this land you will find that naga people and northeast people they are also struggling for equal rights and even three language system education system of india is enabling people to have education in three languages hindi english and one of one other language but in naga area nagaland there are three languages and uh, so they decided not to make any language as the compulsory for the primary and higher education or schooling but it was imposed that they all will study english as their language so what happened most of the literature of nagaland consequently remain in oral tradition only as they are not getting publisher they are not getting you know audience for that and based on that it became remain in oral tradition and they started practicing and remembering and cramming church rhymes and church prayers so christianity again also started spreading its wings in north east india indian state and a great kind of conversion started being practiced where the naga voice was suppressed succumbed and still it is suffocating in the nagaland itself 
when you will start reading again, I quote Esterin Kire, the great Naga writer of present day, surviving today in Norway. She wrote her concern and she said that our literature are stolen. Why stolen? Because it is getting published, the literature that was in oral tradition of the Nagami, in the Nagami language, now it is being published in English only. So the original literature of Naga people are being published and giving the shape of English language. Then she said that our literature was stolen our language was imprisoned, and these prison uh, you know, these prison cells are very real. So somewhere there is a concern for you know accepting and reducing inequality there also. When we talk about the Banwasis of India, you will be shocked to see their lifestyle, but nowadays still many of them are, you know, hunting in forest is a kind of food gatherer form and that is, that should be their inequality and a lot many groups are working over there to reduce inequality and where, you know, Panwashi Kalyan Ashram I must praise their task and efforts. They are working in the area which is less visited. There are, you know, forest areas where forest rangers, they declare that this area is of government. When you will talk about Naga people problem or where community living, there was no one person was the, you know, considered as the owner of the property. It was a community property when it became quite difficult to allocate that this property belongs to home. So for that purpose, again, there are practical problems to seek the solution of certain issues and where one needs to think, reinvestigate and revisit certain issues. But uh, it is also true. Nowadays, you can find that the Dalits of India are coming up front. They are well educated now. They are gaining education in terms of educational opportunities and other things, job opportunities. They are uh, in last, uh, you know, few decades. They, they are representing themselves as the modern elite of that. But at the same time, you know, government is doing a lot many things, but everything can't be expected to be done by the government. And having equal society will be a blessing. We all must realize that when there will be negligible inequality, Life itself will be celebration. Because you see, all these, you know, government schemes are run by ultimately inflow comes for, for, for that is from people, those who are paying tax or from the, you know, income that is government is generating. If everybody will equal and inequality will be reduced, you will realize that it will be, it will cause less burden on the government organized, uh, you know, expenditures. And at the same time, society will be more progressive. So <laughs> if India as a nation could become in the, could, could be enlisted in the top 10 economy of the world under the still moving from that, you know, when we got independence, 
we are nowhere in the counting, neither in top 10 nor, nor in top, top 20. But if we are entering into top 10 economy of the world or into top 5 economy of the world and marching towards be listed as top 4 or top 3 third economy of the world, we are aspiring for that. Definitely, you know, inequality is being reduced, country, nation is progressing, and a brighter picture is there. A br brighter canvas is there, brighter panorama is there, that dark side we have, you know, countered mo most effectively, but still a lot is need to be done, needed to be done. Because once again, now again, after this uh, deductive logic, I would like to be a bit inductive. Uh, nobody can be left in isolation. And uh, again, I am quoting Indira Gandhi, how can we instruct people to refrain from poking animals or not polluting the environment if their life itself is polluted at the source, I am quoting there. So that way, even the bigger concern of having ecological balance and the greenery on this earth, we cannot, you know, force the people to refrain from such activity until and unless. We are not going to empower them, not going to provide access to the modern amenities. And you will visit the Banwasi Kalyanasram areas. And if you really visit these Banwasi people, you will realize that a lot is yet to be required to be done. But definitely, the uh, society is moving towards in, in, uh, inclusivity. Segregation is not a solution. But at the same time, denial is also not the solution of any problem. We have to accept. There is another kind of inequality that you can say disability, disabled people. People who are, you know, disabled and they, they are now, disabled term is not accepted no longer accepted. This is differently able. Then those who are special people, they require a special need. Means they, they are also coming up front in the field and they are, inequality is being reduced. You said that I enable first disabled person of India to, you know, to get admission in while introducing me to get admission in Banaras Hindu University. It was not the first person of India. Let me go for a bit correction. That in terms of disability, earlier many university was, was providing education, many university at a time of providing education to disabled people. But in Banaras Hindu University, there was no provision to take admission of the visually challenged people. They were taking a admission of the orthopedic disabled, but there was no provision of taking the admission of visually challenged people and allowing them or ensuring access them to the graduation degree and higher education from uh, uh, Banaras Hindu University Department. So that was the uh, you know opportunity where I was pre-portal in my early days of academics. And uh, after a lot many efforts, we were able to ensure the access of visually challenged people to academics. So this happened exactly in the year 2004 or three, I, if I uh, am uh, not being very uh, accurate, so maybe 2003 or four. But uh, where Banaras Hindu University authorities were cordial enough to think our plea and they were 
magnanimous enough to open the knowledge vistas to the and their access to the those who were not having an access till they for having graduation and post graduation study if today you will visit in banaras hindu university you will realize that you can see uh, i visited very recently in last month on 25th to be very precise on 24 and 25th of november and i saw them getting education over there walking on the streets of the department and uh, then i realized that what a great thing we have achieved by and thanks to the authorities and academic stakeholder and kashi bindwan parishad people that they were cordial enough to open their doors and open their lanes for these uh, for those who were not having access to that till then so that way you will find that there are multiple disability and many streaming or you know you know there are student with uh, you know slow learners and uh, for them uh, you know autistic student and for them we need to teach and design our academics in a different way so not from only academia rather from different you know arena uh, we are uh, having a feel that inequality is getting reduced but at the same time i think that whole thinking system is to be overhauled why for any debate on you know economics we just started habit we are having a habit to start it from marxism for feminism we are also drawing the inspiration from you know west western countries we need to restructure the whole thought and whole debate why do we start thinking of women empowerment from 1880s rather uh, when we can find the traces of women empowerment from meera when the lady meera bai very indian uh, you know at the time she she voiced her opinion frankly uh, where at the time sati pratha was even in practice and a widow is claiming that i am i am married i got me married and mere to girdar gopal dusro na koi and she was even poisoned and tortured many a ways but she declared her voice of autonomy so why not trace the roots of uh, feminism to meera bai or even you know 1857 to the era where rani jhansi queen of jhansi declared that mai jhansi nahi dungi and uh, and frankly shared opinionated her opinion her voice for that so that way we need to revisit all these things and we need to revisit unwind the uh, unopened chapters of indian traditional knowledge system for being uh, making a bigger leap towards reducing inequality why this indian knowledge system is to be reexplored because this is the area that has not been explored till then and we need to question the uh, feudal colonial and other legacies we need to challenge and then we need to move towards march on towards a new horizons where we can say uh, we can say that we are rightly marching towards the reduction of inequality and a better holistic society there are people talking about planetary studies uh, now why not multiplanetary studies because every day earth is getting warmer and warmer and warmer and mars looks like red planet and if the earth will start looking by like mars then what will happen and what will be if we want to survive sustain and grow and we really want to you know un goals sustainable development goals a reality so you will have to rethink the statement and revisit the statement 
that talks about <clears throat> that any chapter, any problem, human problem that has Western uh, beginning, it has to have have to have the Eastern ending. And Lukeist policy will definitely solve the multiple problems where human being can be, uh, you know, uh, ancient Indian knowledge system is to be explored and definitely we are moving, we are on the right direction and we will be able to sort out certain certain problems of inequalities. It's over to the audience for uh, question, answer and discussion. Some of the students of my university also, they joined and uh, I don't know how long they are connected, whether they are connected now or not. But it's a uh, session is open for question, answer, and observation. So please feel free to <laughs> invite questions. Sir, I have some questions on WhatsApp. So uh, in this question, answer session, we don't have any question. But I would like to ask, you know, sometimes solution becomes a problem. And uh, what is your opinion regarding reservation? I, I think the question is a little bit critical or something, you know, complex. You know, when we started reservation, it was meant only for 10 years. But uh, reservation in education and jobs. So do you, don't you think that this is an, another way of differentiating between people when we say that all human beings are same, uh, we all are same, we believe in fraternity, and, and, only, and after that we impose a reservation? So what is your opinion? Wonderful question, really, and genuine question. Many of my students also raise certain voices like this and uh, this is you know sometimes we feel that somebody is getting more privileged and somebody is going to be deprived uh, but I am giving you one example and uh, I am having it in my diary noted out uh, the reservation in education why to making the school and colleges accessible by those who are denied education since centuries. I am talking about centuries. Until and unless they will not go to their schools until and unless they are forced to because it is not in their habit. They will not move. So make if they they are away from the school, their society will have to ensure that the school should reach them. If they are not reaching the school, school should reach them. Otherwise, illiterate people will do what? Crime. And that illiteracy, they will not be aware about the thing. There will be a, another whole segment, there will be another whole segment of problem society. For that purpose, who will have to pay for judiciary, liar, police, etc. So that way, making them their accessibility to a school. Because a person who is earning, you know, some food or some grain or some, some trifles, very small, cheap labor being working as, he will not have money to pay the fees or fee to a school. So that way, Education will have to reach them. And education, to be very honest, you might be feeling, uh, we, we taught in lovely professional university. We are aware about their fee structure. Is it, uh, you know, accessible for a poor person from our area? I should not take the name of any institution. But education is very, very costly and quality education is costlier even. Costlier even. So whether these institutions are accessible to those for a riksa puller or for a tanga puller or, or for a, you know, auto driver, higher education, technical education, they cannot dream professional education. So ensuring that this is definitely Caste must not equate qualification. Let me underline this one. And this is my interview published in Silicon India website, where it is said that 
there should be other avenues to open. You know, you uh, B.B. Shelley, we all have uh, studied and uh, then after that, Shelley, he, W.B. Eats. In one of his poem, W.B. Eats says that change is the cycle. Least one good law corrupt the system. So, the problem comes. Let the society evolve its solution. My only submission is that if the problem is in Gorakhpur, let the people of Gorakhpur solve the problem. Why is it so? Because they are ha having the practical exposure to that. Clear? That is why I am telling that East will be offering the answer of the Eastern problem. Otherwise, giving cosmetic solutions to will lead nowhere. Let the, let the solution should come from the where researchers should grill and put their step, step into the problem of their own areas and try to found a with act in globally act locally is the solution. Where we are really located, we can find out the solution of the problem that we are projected. The solution will come from us only. And we need to look for the our own problems instead of going for you know ready-made solution being offered by somebody else. Definitely it will not go for the long duration, otherwise, it will create another kind of you know, because sometime a lady from uh, Italy, I think or some other country, sorry, uh, I, I could not remember a country. She asked that, what do you mean in India you treat caste as qualification? In your country, caste is the qualification. But some other solution should come, like Ujwala Yojana providing gas cylinder, their accessibility to gas like some other government policies providing them some accessibility, giving them some, you know, food so that their sons can go, their daughters can go to school, think of going to school. Otherwise, if some person is hand to mouth, he will not think even of going to school. You may see a lot many chotus serving in your canteen. lot many uh, girls, even 12, below 10, 12 years, offering their services in the, uh, as the household. Why? They are also supposed to study. They are also supposed to have their access to academics. And uh, why are they not? Because their family had to mouth. If they will not stop earning that, their family will be starving. Their health issues will not be taken care of. So that way, somewhere we need to yeah reservation is not a solution and it will not go for longer because again we need to you know pb shelley because uh, sorry wb it becomes relevant over here his ideas least one good law will corrupt the society so that way some other solution you know our is having loaded with the resources Earth is loaded with the resources and nature is having nature's plenty. Nature is having plenty enough. But nature can fulfill the need of everybody. Nature can fulfill the need of every man, everyone. But nature cannot fulfill the greed of anyone. It can fulfill, it can offer the solution to the problems of a everyone. But it cannot offer the solution to the greed of anyone. It cannot cater to the greed of it. So somewhere we have to think like, you know, I am Nija Paraveti Garna Lagu Chitisham Udara Sarita Ram Tu Basudai Vakutumakam. Whole earth has a family. See, globalization is having a problem. Liberalization, privatization and globalization is having a vision, narrow vision problem. Globalization talked that Treating the, you know, the concept, business concept of LPG, 
liberalization, privatization, and globalization. Talks about you know offering solution to the problem all all people. But when you talk Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, Vasudha Eva Kutumb, whole earth as a family. It's mine, it's thou. Let us stop this question. The day we will be capable enough to look at that Chotu serving on a tea shop as our own kid, then we will start looking at the practical solution towards the practical solution. Otherwise, we shall not be able to offer any practical solution to such a problem. So this is the issue. And that's why we need to, you know, look on these problems. So I think uh, I did justice yeah, with uh, your question. Very and, beautifully uh, I, you have explained. And you have covered almost all the aspects. Whatever, uh, you know, what I didn't ask and you just uh, replied. Uh, and if you allow, then I have one more thing. Uh, two questions in one question. So yes, uh, I think uh, this is the platform we should talk uh, such things. Yeah. Which type of solution can be thought when a country is divided on the basis of religion? Though this is very unfortunate. Uh, and uh, as far as class struggle exists, uh, one cannot think about equality. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. You know, when uh, everybody is, again, literacy is the key. The day they will be literate, See, literacy is the solution to two, three problems. Enhancing the quality, offering the quality education accessible, making it accessible to everybody will be reducing the, or uh, making the broader understanding among the people. They will come closer. They will realize. And you know, in my interview also, that is on Silicon India, or there is one paper, Indian Social Discourse published, it is my paper, uh, Relocating Caste, Class, Gender and Other Emerging Margin. Uh, we are at, uh, in the year 2023, is about, 23 is about to go, and uh, it is ringing out, and ringing in will be, again, television is coming over here, 24. First quarter of the uh, you know, this 21st century is almost over. By 2050, means whether we like it or not, towards the second half of the 21st century, illiterate will not be those who cannot read and write. Rather, Ill illiteracy will be having not accessibility and adaptability to technology. New illiterate people will be there, those who will not be having access to it. And the society will not be divided into the caste and religion, you, whether we like it or not. But still there will be division. Re there will be challenges for equality. And people will be working for reducing it. The society will be in three parts. High-tech society, low-tech society, and no-tech society. And low-tech society will be working for high-tech society and that they will be getting richer and richer and richer. See, we are discussing on Zoom and who is being paid for that? The one who invented it. For our talk also, the money is going over there. So high-tech people will be earning like anything from everywhere. From, from, you know, virtual world, money flow will be there. But low-tech people will be working for them. And low-tech people, those who will not be having access to this smart gadgets and academic system and devices, they will be suffering still as the illiterates of the day are facing. So somewhere... You know, this religious thing will vanish gradually. This religious division will vanish. Differently, differently it will vanish. You see, nowadays, inter-caste marriages are in practice. Clear? Some of the inter-religious marriages are also being, you know, coming, whether they are successful or not, but they are in practice, inter-religious marriages. So the shop of the 
you know whether you can say padri or the shop of the mulla ji or the shop of the you know priest is going to shut down by next 10 20 years that way what for it is going to shut down for religious politics these chapters will be over because the more the literacy will spread the less the problem will be there and getting access to the knowledge but, uh, they will be literate they will be and i hope like you know when you talk about Rabindranath tagore's poem that in that heaven of freedom let my country away where the mind is without fear and head is held high. For making the hell of everybody, whether irrespective and divided by the narrow boundary walls, we need to pray for that and we need to think for that. And if we are making academics accessible to everyone, whether technical education or academic education or sports education or maybe any kind of education, agricultural education, when it will be there. See, a fulfilled man will never go for a war. Or if somebody is having riches in his hand, food to eat, proper life is there, proper access uh, facilities are there, so he will not, you know, uh, enter into these kind of war. You can see the globe. Who, who are the problem-creating people or problem-creating country in the world, all around? Let us say, not about human beings, but other mankind. Why Gaza is the only region of disturbance? Clear? Why that is? So you will find that, or why, you know, some of the area, you will find that most of the, you know, such practices are there where literacy is low. If literacy and academics will be higher, so everybody will walk on this in this area with great respect and reduced ism, whether it is casteism, Dalit non Dalit, Brahmin non Brahmin, or anything, any kind of ism will, you know, disappear. Or, or you know. Even Hindu and Muslim, communal rights will reduce. Or even countries in war, if they will be. Because, you know, keeping nuclear weapon more in our arsenal will not safeguard us. And it will, it is anti-human, anti-earth, anti-globe, anti-ecosystem. Rather, keeping the wide open mindset and will lead us to the right direction. You got the point. That's where I think uh, Ravindar Tagore is indicating that in that heaven of freedom, let this my country awake. Very true, sir. <clears throat> so uh, really a wonderful session. Now it's time to show gratitude for, for again, as uh, I always thank, I'm thankful to God. So I'm very thankful to God who has given us everything. And uh, then my authority people, uh, then I would like to express my heartfelt appreciation for your remarkable presentation, your insights on the topic, <coughs> sorry, topic of reducing inequality are truly enlightening and informative. So again, thank you so much, sir, for this fruitful session. And uh, 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 what should I say? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. And I'm very thankful to the technical team and participants. And with this prayer, I would like to conclude the session. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhide, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Makachi Dukbhag Bhavit. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks a lot.